Welcome to Part 4 of Napa Valley Rocks, History. It has taken more than 150 years and a long line of great leaders to make the Napa Valley what it is today. Napa Valley's winemaking history begins in the late 1830s when George Calvert Yaunt, founder of the town of Yauntville, plants the first vineyards. Following California's gold rush in the 1860s and 70s, Europeans arrived in the Napa Valley eager to try their hand at making wine to rival the wines from their homeland. Most of the wine at that time was shipped in bulk to San Francisco for sales and distribution. Charles Krug is credited with establishing Napa Valley's first commercial winery in 1861. In 1879, Gustav Niebaum established Inglenook, the first chateau-style winery in the U.S., and he was also the first to sell wine in bottles. By 1889, Napa had more than 140 wineries, including Schramsberg, Beringer, and Inglenook. Though never a large producer, that description was more apt for other agricultural areas of California like Los Angeles, Sonoma, and Livermore, Napa was booming. But what's a success story without a few stunning setbacks? In the late 1890s, phylloxera, tiny sap-sucking insects which feed on the roots of grapevines and kill them, hit and nearly decimated Napa's vineyards. Acreage in Napa Valley declined from nearly 16,000 acres in 1888 to just 2,000 acres by 1900. Then an even greater threat arrived in 1920 with the enactment of Prohibition, which lasted for 13 years. The Great Depression didn't help matters either. By the time World War II came along, Napa's grapevines and wineries were largely abandoned. Many vineyards were planted over to plums and walnuts. The Napa Valley wine industry was in shambles. Despite the setbacks, a few vintners persevered. With the repeal of Prohibition, Napa Valley began the road to recovery. Credit for the post-World War II rebirth of the Napa Valley wine industry goes to a handful of bold and visionary vintners, including Georges de la Tour of Beaulieu Vineyards, who in 1938 recruited André Chelichev, research enologist from Francis Pasteur Institute. In 1939, John Daniel Jr. inherited Inglenook, the Gustav Niebaum estate, and ran the winery for 25 years. Like Beaulieu and Inglenook, a number of pre-prohibition wineries came back to life between the late 1930s and the mid 1960s, but new winery growth was limited. One of the most well-known was built in 1966 when Robert Mondavi founded his iconic winery on Highway 29 with the goal of producing wines that would rival the finest wines of Europe. Mr. Mondavi's renowned marketing strategies brought worldwide recognition to Napa Valley and its wines. He believed in wine hospitality and graciously welcomed visitors to the winery's public tasting room. Many of these vintner leaders, like Louis Martini, John Daniel Jr., and Robert Mondavi, knew there were challenges ahead for their fledgling wine industry, not the least the ongoing threat of natural disasters and growing regulation. They formed the Napa Valley Vintners Trade Association in October 1944 with the idea that we are stronger together than individually. Another important part of Napa Valley's history is its Hispanic heritage. In 1942, facing a labor shortage brought on by World War II, the U.S. and Mexico together created the Bracero Program, bringing guest laborers from south of the border to work in American agriculture. Many of these laborers landed in the California and Napa Valley wine industries and over time became incredibly skilled in techniques related to premium grape growing. Some went on to own their own vineyard management companies, while others have become Napa Valley vintners in their own right, moving from the vineyard to winemaking and winery ownership. While many in the Napa Valley believed in the quality of the Appalachian, and in the early 1970s Napa Valley's reputation continued to grow, it was a pivotal endorsement from another part of the world that helped put Napa Valley on the wine-growing map. The 1976 Judgment of Paris wine tasting, chronicled recently in the movie Bottle Shock, set the wine world on its ear. Few could have imagined that California wines could win such a competition. Yet California rated best in each category. The hard work of Napa Valley's vintners was starting to pay off. <laughs>